Mm -hmm. That ain't no joke. Okay, this is video number five in our DIY off-grid solar electrical installation series. If you've missed our previous videos, I'm going to have a playlist in the description of this video where you can watch everything in order. Today we're going to talk about the power center. In the last video we uh, assembled and wired up the combiner box, wired all the panels together, flipped all the switches, and now we have power coming from the solar panels up to our power center here. Uh, I've got everything hooked up. I'm going to go through how it's all wired, and then we're going to power everything on, show you how it works. Okay, before I start, uh, I'm going to go over a quick overview of our whole system and kind of give you an insight as to how we put this whole thing together. In the event that our solar is down and uh, no sun, no battery, no anything, we always have this diesel generator. This is a 12, 10 kilowatt. Uh, diesel generator. I've rewired it. <clears throat> it actually does put out 240. Uh, it was previously wired for um, 120 directly to the load center that runs the camp uh, and it also had a battery charger hooked to it for our old batteries. So I've rewired it to use all of it, 240, uh, with three conductor 10 gauge Romex that goes directly into the power center. So we can bypass the inverter and the whole solar through this system uh, and run directly off generator if we need to. Uh, we can also charge the batteries. This is an inverter charger as well. So if there's no sun, we always have a way to keep our batteries charged, keep our uh, place running. And in the event that this generator goes bad, we always have the backup, the little Honda 2000 watt generator that we can run critical loads like our refrigerator and internet and whatever off of. We know that works because we had to do that during this installation and I'll go into that in the video after this one. Okay so let's go over this system. Okay here are our batteries. These are all six of our Simplify 3.5 kilowatt hour 48 volt batteries. They are all wired in parallel from negative to negative the whole way down, positive to positive the whole way down, and so we've got 14.6 kilowatt hours worth of storage here at 48 volts. Uh, a lot of people use bus bars for these. A lot of people use a battery combiner box where each one of these goes into its own combiner and has a shutoff switch. We didn't do that because each one of these has its own breaker and we were able to get the uh, battery cables pre-made and so we could just wire it up like this. And the positive lead to the power center is over here. The negative lead to the power center is over there, which makes this entire thing one big battery. And so it will charge and discharge equally when all of the breakers are on. Over, the, over here is the battery temperature sensor for the inverter. This is a MagnaSign 4448PAE inverter charger. Uh, it both inverts the batteries from 48 volts DC to 120 AC and it charges the batteries from an AC input whoop, from an AC input which would be this generator because we're not grid tied at all. Here's an SPD from that comes in from uh, array number one. You can see the blue lights on that means the array is on and it's sending power up here. Up here on top is the SPD for array number two. It also has power. These two SPDs are for AC. This is for AC input, this is for AC output. So if this were inverting and generating power, sending it to the house, this LED would be on. Right now all of this is turned off, so I can kind of show you how it all works. Now I went ahead when we bought the system and I had Midnight Solar pre-wire the entire e-panel for me. It costs a little bit extra, but I planned on having it save us at least another day's work to have to wire all this myself and you know they install the inverter charger they install this uh, wire guard or cable guard they put this hood on it uh, they installed the charge controllers and the remote for the inverter and the SPD so it was all kind of pre-done for me all I really had to do was hook up the batteries the solar panels and uh, we we're good to go and so I'm going to show you kind of what this whole e-panel thing is 
it, it takes everything and puts it in a nice little box with all the breakers for all the circuits. It's really cool. Okay, all these battery cables are about eight and a half inches. When I got these, actually two or three of them weren't long enough. They were off by about a quarter inch. And so I actually had to stretch these a little bit, but I, I, I got them all to fit. Because you want all your cables to be as short as possible and they have, have to be exactly the same length so that your batteries charge and discharge evenly. These are two watt uh, battery cables with 3 8 inch terminals. And then the positive and the negative main battery leads that go to the power center is 4 watt cable. So we have no problem moving a lot of amperage through these cables. These four wires are the solar panel array, positive negative for each array, comes into here. The, this is a common negative bus bar, so all of your solar panel negative leads come in and tie here. Um, and this is the battery negative bus bar as well. The positive leads from the solar panels go up and each one of them has their own terminal. So this is PV1, PV2. Uh, and then from there, there are breakers over here that allow you to turn on and off the input from the solar panels and turn on and off the charge controllers. So you can control everything about the solar part of it with these breakers. Okay, so that covers the input of the solar and then it will go to the charge controllers. Uh, things that are hooked to the charge controller, uh, this would be the battery temperature sensor that is just uh, sticks onto a battery that allows the charge controller to modify the charge based on the battery temperature if these were flooded lead acid batteries that would be a bigger issue but because they're lithium uh, you don't really have the the temperature sensitivities as you do with flooded lead acid you just can't charge these batteries below freezing it's not a good idea this cable here is the remote cable that allows you the remote control for the inverter to work that just plugs into the inverter over here. This uh, data cable is the battery temperature sensor for the inverter, which is over here on the negative terminal. And so there's two battery temperature sensors, one for the inverter and one for the charge controllers, um, because the inverter also charges. So it needs to know battery temperature. Now, hooked to the main negative bus bar, or main negative terminals, is a shunt called a Whizbang Junior from Midnight Solar. This allows us to get very accurate amperage readings, amp hour readings, and it tells us uh, the state of charge and how much battery power we have at any time. This is a really cool little gadget. Battery positive here comes to this main battery breaker. This shuts off the entire system, uh, which is good. Uh, battery negative goes to here, and then the negative from here goes to the inverter. Positive from here goes to the inverter as well. Uh, as I said, this is the PV1, PV2 positive. This is the AC in, um, leg one, leg two, and common. So you can bring in 220, which I'm doing. This is a 220 line. And then this is the common again for AC out, and then leg one, leg two. So you can send 220 out. I'm only sending 120 out to our load panel, which runs the house, because that's all we need. Later, I could add another leg and push 220, which is cool. All these SPDs, as I said, these are AC rated SPDs for surge protection. So each circuit, the line in from AC has one, the line out from AC has one. And then again, these are the DC ones for the solar. So everything in here is labeled, pre-wired, very well done. Uh, all the cables are properly sized. Uh, I'm really impressed with Midnight Solar and how they put these together. It's very easy to understand. Um, they send you all the instructions for wiring things. One thing that was confusing to me is I thought that when you brought your positive and negative leads in from the solar panels that they went that they both went into a charge controller and in this configuration that's not the case. Uh, the positive goes here and then there's another lead that goes from there into the charge controller but the negatives all go to this negative bus bar and it does not go to the charge controller so that's how they have it wired up okay now this these are breakers that allow you to bypass the inverter if we were running the generator you can slide that up and it'll completely bypass the inverting process and pass the power directly through 
to uh, the house, which is a good thing. If you need to shut everything down and work on it and you still need to power with the generator, you can do that. Um, and the battery charger works from the 220 input. Each leg has a 30 amp breaker in here. Uh, if you're only pushing 120 in from your AC, then you would want to set your uh, charger to 50%. Uh, otherwise, it needs the 240 volts to ch charge your batteries. That's kind of an overview. It's kind of hard to see, I know, because it, we're in a little tiny shed here. But I'm going to power it all up and show you how it, how it all works. Uh, incidentally, I just had this powered up. We ran it all day yesterday, 24 hours. We used about 6% of our battery capacity. And by 9.30 this morning, it had completely recharged and we were in float. So this thing is working really well. It's doing exactly what we designed it to do. So I'm gonna button this up and we're gonna turn everything on. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, first I'm gonna turn on all the batteries and then we're gonna get a voltage reading. Okay, we're gonna get a battery reading here. 54.3 we need to be at about 55.4 so we'll let these charge once we get this whole thing turned on all right batteries are on now we're going to turn on the main inverter shutoff this 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 lets the batteries bring power to this whole system all right now we have power to the inverter <clears throat> uh, and and this is the remote that runs it so you got to set the clock so it's 10.08 a.m. right now. All right, inverter is off. DC voltage 55.2. Now I have noticed that this measures about a volt higher than it actually is. Um, so I always go by an actual meter reading of my batteries. The charge controllers allow you to offset the voltage that it's reporting so that it's reporting properly. So if your charge controller is like a volt too high, you can tweak it and set it down to match an actual meter reading that you've taken on your batteries. I love that about that. Okay, so now we have the inverter power going to it, but it's not on yet. Uh, now I'm gonna power up the charge controllers one at a time with these breakers up here. This is the master controller and it's linked to this one using their follow me feature so they share battery temperature information and things like that. <clears throat> okay, this is reporting 54.2 and this is 55.2. Like I said, this is always about a volt high. This is actually correct. I'm going to power up the second one now. All right, so array number one um, and array number two. Now, right now they're resting, so they're not allowing any input. Plus, I have the arrays turned off. That's why there's zero watts. So I'm gonna turn on the array input to this charge controller now. We're getting 105 volts, which is pretty good. Now it's gonna figure it out. <clears throat> 1500 watts, 27.6 amps. That's a lot. That's pretty good for this. And then the voltage went down to 83.7. So, like I said, this charges by 9.30 a.m. Our batteries are topped off. Now I'm gonna power up array number two. Let it settle. Now these just went immediately into absorb. Our batteries are 55.4, 55.3. That's exactly where our float point is set. So this, we have to set these to absorb for th three minutes, which is the minimum that you can do these charge controllers in. You don't even need absorb with lithium batteries. You just want to bulk it and then go to float if you can. So these are going to take three minutes and then we're going to float. Batteries will be on 100%. And uh, then we'll be good to go. All right, now you can always tell when these two are talking to each other. Uh, in network mode because the, a little blue light inside there will blip really fast and and it'll tell you that it's getting the packets if the blue light is like a longer blink then they're not really talking to each other um, I mentioned that whiz-bang shunt thing I want to show you that 
that's what this reading is. So it's bringing in 4.7 amps. Uh, it knows that we have a 402 amp hour battery bank. State of charge is 100%. We have brought in 187 amp hours. We have used 88, so we've netted 98 amp hours of harvest. And our batteries are at 402 amp hours, so we're fully charged. Batteries 100%. So this thing works awesome. Now, our batteries are charged, our charge controllers are working, now we're going to turn on the inverter and convert this to uh, 120 and send it to the camp. So all you do is hit the uh, inverter on button. Okay, now our inverter is on, it's sitting here searching, uh, and that means that there's no draw on it. The reason for that is our load center is turned off to the camp. So I'm going to turn that on, and then it's going to start working. Now, that, now it's buzzing because it's inverting. 56 volts, there's a 5 amp draw uh, because the fridge just kicked on, the router is booting up, and then this will chill out and go down to 3, 4 amps. Now, cool thing about this whole uh, remote allows you to check your voltage DC amp draw, 4 amps. Allows you to check your AC putting out 120 at 60 Hertz so this pure sine wave is generating power that is cleaner than what you're going to get from your power company uh, there's one amp draw AC and the other cool thing is you can monitor the temperatures the inverter battery temperature sensor is 73 degrees the inverter FET board is 80 degrees um, these other things we do not have hooked up this allows you to like parallel multiple multiple charger or multiple inverters. Uh, automatic generator start allows you to do that. Uh, the inverter transformer is 93 degrees. So everything's doing what it's supposed to do. Batteries are charged. Inverters inverting. And uh, so this is a successful installation finally. So that's it. Everything's working like it's supposed to. Finally. And fingers crossed that everything stays good but so far I'm real impressed um, love midnight solar products I will only buy those from now on I'm a little iffy on the magnum inverter I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video where we go over the good the bad and the ugly of this whole project and these batteries worth all the, worth every penny so real happy so that's uh that's our installation series and if you guys have questions or anything I know I didn't really cover a lot about this, like how to program these and how to do this and that. Uh, it's just in the manual, you can read that. But if you have specific questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. When I said, like I said, we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.